having understood the international agreements let us look at nature reserves in today's lecture see nature reserve is a protected area of importance for flora fauna or geological features flora means plants fauna means animals and geological features means if there is any landform of uh, ecological importance then these are termed as nature reserves why nature reserves are declared they are declared or uh, they are identified for the process of conservation and research okay it is an area reserved for conservation and research nature reserves fall into various categories depending on the level of protection given by the local laws previously we have seen um, different nature uh, reserves or the protected areas such as wildlife sanctuaries the national parks community reserves so as per the local laws different types of nature reserves are identified these include wildlife sanctuaries biosphere reserves and other protected areas these are few nature reserves in india the first is achanakmar amarkanthak now this uh, nature reserve is located in madhya pradesh and chatisgarh that means two states it spans across two states first is madhya pradesh and second is chatisgarh this nature reserve that is achanakmar amarkanthak is famous for the animal chausingha okay or it is also known as four horned antelope you might have seen this animal then in the southern part there is agastya malai nature reserve okay this is located in kerala the important animal in this nature reserve is nilgiri tahar okay, nilgiri tahar um, it require it is found in the shola grasslands of uh, nilgiris okay that is the ideal habitat of this animal then the cold desert nature reserve spans across two states first is ladakh and the second state is himachal pradesh the important animal in this nature reserve is snow leopard then the next nature reserve is dihang dibang this nature reserve is located in the northeastern state of arunachal pradesh okay and mishmi takin which is a goat like uh, animal so that is uh, important in this nature reserve then dibru saikhova dibru saikhova this nature reserve is present in the state of assam and important animal here is water buffalo you might have uh, heard a news few years back that there were floods in the state and that had affected this animal then project tiger reserves of india these are many okay many tiger reserves are there we'll see further but some of the important are kanha and ranthambore okay so these the important animal in tiger reserves is tiger the aim of establishing tiger reserves tiger conservation okay we have seen before that these are uh, declared by the advice of national tiger conservation authority ntca then the great nicobar nature reserve this is present in the andaman and nicobar islands and the important animal is salt water crocodile then the gulf of mannar again this is located in the southernmost part of the country and it is present between india and sri lanka 
the important animal in gulf of mannar is dugong dugong is also known as sea cow okay it is a herbivorous animal then uh, another one is kutch next is kutch we have discussed this before in the last semester the location of this reserve is in gujarat okay important animal is indian wild ass okay then the next is manas nature reserve this is located in assam again important animal here is pygmy hog then elephant reserves of india so this project elephant was launched in the year 1992 basically to conserve the elephant corridors some of the famous elephant reserves are in sonitpur tandeli so the important animal in the, these reserves reserves is elephant only where the main target is elephant conservation then the next is nanda devi nanda devi this uh, nature reserve is located in the state of uttarakhand and uh, himalayan black bear is an important animal here so these were few important ones uh, there are many nature reserves in india which are uncountable okay so they my um, some of them i have listed out okay some important ones and the the animals which are important in these re- nature reserves that we have discussed now yes this is a map showing tiger reserves of india this is a very uh, good map of various tiger reserves in india so if we see rajasthan there is sariska ranthambore mukundra hills ramgarh then in maharashtra we have taduba pinch meghat navegaon nagira then sayadri bhor in karnataka we have bilgiri rangnatha temple then bhadra bandipur dandeli anshi nagarhol in the north east there are tiger reserves in the states of assam and arunachal pradesh in assam there is manas kaziranga nameri orang in arunachal pradesh there is kamlang namdapa pake then uttar pradesh also has tiger reserves the dudhwa this is very famous you might have heard of it then pilibit amangarth ranipur then uttar uttarakhand the jim corbett again this is very famous jim corbett and raja ji in the southern part of the country we have two tiger reserves in kerala periyar and parambikulam and in tamil nadu we have five around five tiger reserves madumalai annamalai kalakad madu munda mud mundan thurai satyamangalam okay shri villiputhur meghamalai so you can see from this map itself that except the north india extreme north tiger is present all over the india okay so the geographical distribution almost every state has a tiger reserve except few okay, like gujarat and uh, punjab and himachal so and also few states on the north east so sparing some states there are many tiger reserves across india they are established for tiger conservation so we have looked at the nature reserves what are these these are nothing but the protected area of importance 
for flora, fauna or geological features. So, we have seen tiger reserves which are established for conservation and research of tigers. Okay, so, there is a particular important animal for which they are established. These fall into various categories depending on the level of protection given by the laws. So, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserves, other protected areas, all of these they fall into nature reserves. The next topic is tribal population and rights. In, a, in India, there is a separate schedule which deals with the tribal populations. Okay, so, the importance is given to tribes present all over the country in terms of their rights. Okay. Now, why there is a need to recognize the rights of tribal population? See, during colonial rule, tribes were deprived or the tribal people were deprived of their rights over the forest land. Since ancient times, they have their pract agricultural practices and their way of living is also different compared to the cities. They are far away from the cities in their own uh, community or the culture. So, in the colonial period, they were deprived of their rights over the forest land. And so, forest land was the major source of their livelihood and therefore this act that is scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act 2006 it became crucial to the rights of millions of tribal and other forest dwellers okay so they were or the their rights were recognized to hold the forest land and live under the individual inhabitation inside the forest okay that means they were uh, their right to hold any forest land and if they want to cultivate anything uh, any uh, or they want to do agriculture for livelihood also they can hold land for individual living also their right to hold land for self cultivation for their livelihood is also recognized under this act so this act is very very important when it comes to tribal populations and rights so this law concerns the rights of forest dwelling communities to land and other resources present in the forest so not only land but also they have rights over the resources present in the forest okay they might collect these resources for their livelihood or if they want to live in the forest they can live also they can cultivate for their own needs cultivate any crop for their own needs now some of the important provisions of this tribal population and uh, scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers act some of the important provisions of this act are that the tribe, tribal people they have been given right to hold land that is forest land or live in the forest land so they can hold the land that means they have been given the ownership they can also live in the forest land they have been given community rights such as nistar okay nistar is a concession to the villagers or the forest dwellers given so so that they can access the forest produ uh, produce for the domestic use by paying certain amount to the government so such as uh, bamboo fuel and uh, so anything if they want it is given at a subsidized rate to these people so star is a concession given to the forest dwellers so as to access the forest produced for their domestic use and paying a certain amount to the government so subsidize uh, bamboo then fuel wood all of this falls in 
the provisions of the act but they will get subsidized uh, products from the government but they will not they are not supposed to sell these okay so community rights such as nistar are recognized then these have been given ownership access to collect use and dispose of minor forest produce what falls in the minor forest produce minor forest produce are all the non timber forest produce okay such as traditionally collected within and outside the village boundaries so minor forest produce includes honey then tendu leaves medicinal herbs they have knowledge of plants that can be used as medicinal herbs also they have knowledge of plants that can be eaten also a wide variety is of plants that are they, that constitutes their food so this act scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers act it recognizes their right of ownership of minor forest produce they can collect minor forest produce and also they can dispose of the minor forest produce also they have been given rights or uses of entitlement entitlement such as fish and other products of water bodies then grazing rights have been given traditional season uh, seasonal resource they can utilize understood so if they want to access any product of the water bodies present in the forest that is fish or any algae if they find use then or any other plant as food they can access it then grazing rights have been given to the to their livestock and traditional seasonal resource if uh, over the years if a resource is used in their tradition then they can have an access to that right to community tenures of habitat and habitation for primitive groups and pre agricultural communities see these primitive groups or pre agriculture commun- communities they are nomadic that means they move from one place to another once they also practice a uh, shifting cultivation that they clear forest for agriculture once the fo- once the land is uh, harvested and when they decide to when they decide to leave the land and move to some other place they clear the land by burning the land that is shifting cultivation so in such communities the land is not fixed they keep on moving therefore the right to community tenures of habitat and habitation for primitive groups and pre agriculture communities are also recognized under scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers act then they have been given the rights over the disputed land okay if any land is disputed then they can access if it is present in the forest then rights for conversion of patas leases grants issued by any local council or any state government on forest land to the titles see patas is a document it is a document containing land settlement so land settlement document is patta so if they want to convert it okay then they can do that okay rights of settlement and conversion of forest villages so they can settle in the forest village if they want to convert the forest village they can then right to protect regenerate or conserve or manage any community forest resource which they have been traditionally protecting and conserving for sustainable use so they can also establish community forest resource okay if they find that this area is important and it and for over the years if they are, they are traditionally protecting it and conserving it for sustainable use then they can protect regenerate it and also conserve and or manage also then rights recognized under any state law or autonomous district council or autonomous regional council see autonomous district council and autonomous regional council these are the councils present in the northeast india okay 
so northeastern states they have this body these bodies autonomous district council or autonomous regional council these recognize the tribal rights okay, because northeastern states they mostly have the tribal population so the rights of the tribal population are in, are recognized by these councils okay in the areas where autonomous district council and autonomous regional councils are not present that is the peninsular region in that case the state will recognize the rights of tribals okay so if state or these council and uh, if these councils find that a certain right has to be given to the tribal population present in their area then they recognize those rights then right to access biodiversity and community right to intellectual property and traditional knowledge see tri- when you, when it comes to tribal population they are very very intelligent or they they have a very sound knowledge of the wild plants and animals so they know which plant is useful for which disease isn't it and they know that which plant is healthy which plant contains poisonous chemicals so over the years they have this traditional knowledge and therefore they can access the biodiversity in the forest and the community right is given to the intellectual property all the and to the traditional knowledge now remember here that this act excludes traditional right of hunting or trapping or extracting a part of body of any species of wild animals traditionally the forest dwellers were hunters isn't it they used to hunt animals for food and also to obtain various articles from them so now this is excluded even though they have been given rights over the forest they cannot hunt or trap any animal or they cannot extract a part of body of any species of wild animal understood so this has been included and this is excluded by the scheduled tribes and other forest dwellers act now who is eligible to get these rights see rights under the act are confined to those primarily residing in the forest that means they are never they have resided in the areas outside the forest they are primarily residing in the forest and they are dependent on the forest and forest land for a livelihood so these are only the ones which are eligible for the rights under the act okay then how how the rights of these people are recognized see there is a village assembly which is gram sabha it will pass a resolution recommending whose rights to which resources should be recognized okay so identification of rights that is forest uh, rights of the tribals over forest resource first a resolution is passed by the gram sabha or village assembly so it identifies the rights that should be recognized and to whom the right should be given then this resolution is screened okay and it is then further approved at taluka and district level there is a screening committee established so whether what screening committee will do whether these rights can be given or not okay and then it is approved at taluka and district level so screening committee comprises of three government officials and three num- members of local body at that level so at every level the screening committee comprises of three government officials and three members of local body at that level okay so this is the process of recognition of rights that from village gram sabha will pass a resolution then at taluka it will get passed then it again district level it will be considered and finally the state will give a notification that these rights can be uh, accepted under the act
the next topic is human wildlife conflict in indian context now why there is a conflict between humans and wildlife there is made it is because of a limited resource so it is land population is increasing and human population is increasing and in order to feed such a large population the forests are cleared isn't it to provide food and shelter to the human beings so increasing human population has put stress on the resources so what has happened is human settlements have reached edges of the forest okay that means the forest are cleared so as to provide shelter to human beings and this is not just to provide the shelter see to meet the needs of growing population in terms of food also the forests are cleared for agriculture in that case also the habitat or the home of wild animals is reduced then if the government wants to develop in uh, any area or it wants to establish an industrial unit in that case also the forest area is reduced okay so shrinking of the forest area or the home of the animals is a major reason why they venture into adjacent human settlements okay human settlements have reached next to forest also but in many cases humans have encroached into forest that means forest are cleared this has happened in the major cities so now where the wild animals will go in search of food they venture or come into the human settlements very good example of this human animal or human wildlife conflict we have seen in case of wild boar okay uh, which wo- which was found in the city of pune so people also didn't know what to do and because of all that noise and uh, crowd the animal got stressed and that lead to the death of that animal okay managing wildlife nobody has an experience of managing such wildlife in the city and because of all that mishap that it resulted in the death of that animal so this is that is a example of human wildlife conflict okay, which we all have seen so why these animals have come into human habitation because humans have encroached upon their homes so there is no option left for them to move out in search of food then what are the causes of human wildlife conflict why does the human wildlife conflict happens first is population explosion whose population explosion human population explosion see human when human population increases the the need for food shelter will increase okay to meet the demands of this growing population for food the forest will be cleared for agriculture to provide shelter or to establish residential units the forests are cleared nowadays you can see many residential um, complexes are present in the hilly areas so subsequently the forests are cleared for that okay then uh, if the government wants to establish an industrial unit it will clear the forest okay so population explosion is the main reason for or main cause for the human wildlife conflict then second is deforestation again cutting down of forest for various purposes increase road density so many of the important highways they pass through the forest 
okay so when the density of road increases in the forest there there are instances of human wildlife conflict so there are road kills you might have seen a uh, snake uh, killed on the road there are news where uh, snake kills are very common in the these protected areas okay or in the forest roads because these animals are active at night and nobody can see them properly so the road kills are very uh, prominent in the uh, ro- on the roads which pass through the forest okay then destruction of animal corridors now what is a corridor it is a strip of land which helps the movement of animals from one habitat to other habitat okay so destruction of the animal corridor such as elef- destruction of elephants corridor is responsible for the human wildlife conflict then agricultural expansion population has increased to feed such a huge population there has to be clearing of the forest for agriculture okay then there are other uh, reasons like poaching to get the articles see many uh, wild animals are killed so as to obtain different uh, products of their body such as the tooth in case of elephant then skin from the greater one horn rhinoceros in the past these animals were were hunted for these products now it is banned but it was highly unregulated in the colonial era okay so the animals were killed for the products obtained from them okay uh, many a times they are killed for the meat uh, the local people they favor their meat therefore they were killed such as the olive ridley turtles okay so that is again a example of human wildlife conflict then electrification penetrating into the forest area okay so if there is there are electricity poles in the forest area sometimes it might harm the animals which are present in the forest so all of these and rapid and unplanned urbanization urbanization means what development of cities so nowadays this is occurring at a faster pace isn't it there is rapid urbanization but it has to be planned that means the city should not encroach into the forest but it is highly unplanned now okay it needs to be planned so rapid and unplanned urbanization is one of the reasons why there is human wildlife conflict okay again there are developmental projects that government wants to undertake that is that means it wants to build highways that pass through the forest then there are certain railway tracks passing through the forest it if it wants to establish factories then the natural habitats of many animal species gets destroyed and that leads to human wildlife conflict see whenever any wild animal enters human settlement or human colonies both the animal and the people they act out of fear and attack on each other that means humans feel that it will harm me and animal feel that humans will harm me okay and because of that both of them attack to each other and there is a conflict between the two okay so this is this these instances are nothing but a way of acting due to fear okay the conflicts are because of acting due to uh, acting out of fear and therefore the but who is usually when it is uh, the animal who harms human we are more concerned isn't it so this is found in many places today now let us look at the examples of human wildlife conflict 
Now let us first discuss the leopard human conflict. Leopards are very common nowadays in the farms. If any of you have a farm, any one of you have a farm farm, you might have seen that leopards they there are many instances of leopards being found in the farm. So Indian leopard is a reclusive animal by nature what is the meaning of reclusive animal that it is a solitary animal it does not like people okay so do not think that leopard is very fond of you it is a solitary animal and it tries to avoid human settlements but now what hap- has happened is there is habitat loss first of all okay humans have encroached on their habitat which is forest then there is a dwindling prey base prey base means their food is becoming less in the forest and then there is poaching also so now because the food is reduced in the forest they try to venture or they try to come into the human habitation in search of food and therefore they try to prey or try to uh, attack the livestock of the humans particularly the cattle and goats so and also pets and when the humans try to scare them away in that they attack the humans also so the major reason is dwindling prey base okay and the habitat loss because of which the leopards are wandering into the human habitats or so human habitation now where this conflict is seen it is seen all over india okay in the states of most of the states of uh, india they have leopard human conflict so states like uttarakhand then himachal pradesh assam west bengal karnataka maharashtra even on the outskirts of delhi you get leopard human conflict then the next is human tiger conflict human tiger conflict is seen in the sundarbans you might have heard of this place it is a mangrove wetland okay highest uh, largest mangrove in the world okay it is a world heritage site also and it also comes under ramsar convention ramsar convention is a convention regarding wetlands okay it is home to about 200 to 300 royal bengal tiger tigers can tigers are very very um, acclimatized to this this habitat now humans living there are particularly the tar- tribal groups they move around sundarbans in search of the livelihood okay for collection of honey so when the humans are dependent on sundarbans for livelihood they come out and the tigers they are found to kill humans in the sundarbans so it is a area where you can see human tiger conflict and the human deaths by tigers is highest in the sundarbans okay then kaziranga national park there also human tiger conflict uh, zone is there okay kaziranga this area then human elephant conflict so which are the human and elephant conflict zones assam then meghalaya karnataka orissa kerala tamil nadu jharkhand and kaziranga these are the main man elephant conflict zones or human elephant conflict zones okay what is the reason for human elephant conflict zone the major reason is destruction of their natural movement corridors what are elephant corridors these are nothing but strip of land that will connect larger habitats with the 
elephant population. Okay. So, the elephants try to move across these habitats and the destruction of these corridors is, is the main reason for the human elephant conflict. Also, the forest cover, loss of forest cover, mining, encroachment into the forest area, these are other reasons. Now, why elephants move across the habitats? It is basically for feeding and breeding. Okay, for the purpose of feeding and breeding, they move across the habitats through these natural corridors. Now, when natural corridors are only destroyed, what will happen? The animal naturally will come into the human settlement. Okay, if a human settlement or a road is established on its corridor, movement corridor, so it will come on in the human settlement. So, this is the major reason of human elephant conflict. See now, the, the, this is the human uh, wildlife conflict is not just restricted to these examples. There are various other wildlife species of nilgai, then monkeys, uh, wild boars destroying the crops. You might have seen that monkeys, they uh, if you have a farm in nearby to the forest area, monkeys they destroy the crop. Okay. Wild boars also have found to destroy crops. So, as a result, people get angry and they try to have a negative impression of animals. But see, because there is no food in the forest, these animals are forced to move towards the human settlements or the agricultural crops. They are forced to feed on the agricultural crops. Therefore, there is no need to have a negative impression of these animals. Okay. This is going to happen in future also. As long as the human encroachment on forest continues, this will be seen. Human wildlife conflict will be observed. Okay. Where these animals will go? If the there is no food in the forest, naturally they will come out in the human settlements and try to feed on whatever is available. That is the cattle. If the herbivore is there, it will try to feed on the agricultural crops. Okay. So, this was all about the human wildlife conflict. So, in the today's lecture, we have discussed about the nature reserves. That nature reserve is a protected area of importance for flora and fauna or the any geological features. It is reserved for conservation and research. Then there are various categories depending on the level of protection given by the local laws. Some of them are wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserves. Then we have discussed or seen few of them. Okay, I have given example of few of them. So, each of them have a animal like the Achanak Mar Amarkantak has an important animal which is Chausinga or the four horned antelope. Then Gulf of Mannar has Dugong or the sea cow. Okay. Then snow leopard found in the cold desert that is Ladakh and Himachal Pradesh. Then there are yes tiger reserves all over the India. In most of the states tiger reserves have been established except few states okay and uh, these are the areas which are declared for conservation of tiger okay similar way there are areas for conservation of elephants that is there is an elephant reserve also okay then we have discussed the tribal population and rights why there was a need to recognize the rights of tribal population because in the colonial era tribes were deprived of their right over the forest produce and also the ownership of land that was also not recognized in the colonial era so this act is landmark when it comes to the tribal rights the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers recognition of forest right, forest rights act 2006 so it is a landmark legislation in that uh, area 
then what is this legislation that it ri- recognizes the rights of forest dwelling communities to land that means ownership and also other resources present in the forest what are the important provisions of the act that the tribal communities or the forest dwellers they have right to hold or live in the forest land they have been given community rights such as nistar i told you what are nistar nistar is a concession given to the forest dwellers so that they can access forest produce by paying a certain amount to the government okay that is a subsidized uh, forest produce okay then subs they get uh, forest produced at subsidized rates then right of ownership is also recognized okay they have an access to collect use and dispose minor forest produce minor forest produce includes all the non timber forest produce such as uh, honey tendu leaves medicinal herbs so they can collect it okay also if they want to use any product of the water bodies present in the forest such as fish or any other plant or any traditional seasonal resource they can use they have the right for that then right to community ten tenures of habitat and habitation for primitive groups and pre agricultural communities this i explained you that um, the pre agricultural communities they are not located or they do not settle on a particular land they try to move between the for they move across the forest okay so what do they do they will try to cultivate land in a particular area when they want to shift to another place they will abandon that area by burning the cult, uh, farm that is on a shifting cultivation so the rights of such communities are also recognized under this act they have been given rights over the disputed land right for conversion of patas patas are legal uh, land settlement documents given to them okay so they have the right of conversion of the, these patas then who issues patas the local council or any state government of that forest of that um, state then the rights of settlement and conversion of forest villages villages then right to protect regenerate or conserve or manage any community forest resource which they have been traditionally protecting and conserving for sustainable use okay rights recognized under any state law or autonomous district council this uh, i told you that the northeastern states they have highest tribal population and in that case many of the tribal different tribes are present in the northeastern india so over there autonomous district council and autonomous regional councils are present so the rights of these people are recognized by them okay and and the area where these bodies are not present state will recognize under any state law they have right to access biodiversity and community right to intellectual property and traditional knowledge okay but this act it excludes the traditional right of hunting that means hunting trapping or extracting any part of the body of any wild species is not allowed under this act okay then what is the eligibility see rights under this act are confined to those who are primarily residing in the forest and are dependent on the forest and forest land for a livelihood okay so only these are entitled to rights under the act how is the how are the rights recognized see gram sabha or the village assembly will pass a resolution recommending which rights should be recognized again it is approved at taluka and district level at every stage it is screened by a screening committee comprising of three government officials and three elected members of the local body then we have discussed about the human wildlife conflict in indian context why there is a conflict see rise, uh, the major causes 
human population explosion okay in order to feed the increasing human population forests are cleared for agriculture then to meet the needs of shelter of the increasing population forests are cleared for shelter okay to meet the needs of food they are cleared to meet the needs of shelter of the human population they are cleared so now if the uh, habitats of wild animals are is reduced then they will naturally come out into the human settlement so shrinking of the forest is the major reason then if the government wants to do any developmental project the forests are cleared sometimes electrification of forest so electrification of, uh, of forest so that re- is responsible for human wildlife conflict then we have discussed the human wildlife conflict in with respect to leopard tiger and elephant why there is a leopard human by uh, human leopard conflict because of the dwindling prey base in the forest the leopards try to leopards try to venture into the human habitat and they prey on the livestock pets and also attack animals then uh, the human tiger conflict is fa- is seen in the sundarbans and sundarbans is uh, responsible for highest or this place has shown highest human deaths by tigers okay also in kaziranga there is a human tiger conflict zone then human elephant conflict human elephant conflict is because of the destruction of the natural mov- 